It was a nail-biting game. The Bedlam battle heated up in Stillwater. We're going to take you to the game. Came to the big exciting finish, but who won the tailgating battle? Did that come to the exciting finish? <laughs> yes, and a couple from Australia. Honeymoon's right here in Oklahoma City at a Thunder game. And we'll find out what you were thankful for as we head from the Thanksgiving holiday into the Christmas holiday. All that and more coming up on News OK TV. This is News OK TV. This is News OK TV. Welcome to News OK TV, where NewsOK.com comes to your living room television. I'm Dave Morris. And I'm Angie Bruss. Well, it was a weekend of food, family, and of course, football. Rival college teams went head to head all across the country, and there were a few upsets. You're right about that, Angie, including right here at home. The 13th ranked Sooners defeated the 9th ranked OSU Cowboys. And as she mentioned, nail biting bedlam action that had the fans on the edge of their seats. The Oklahoma's Jenny Carlson and Jake Trotter talk about what led the Sooners to victory. I'm Jenny Carlson here with Jake Trotter. We're in Stillwater. Our OU post game is brought to you by Eskridge Lexus. They've got some of their best deals of the year. Be sure to stop in and see them today. Jake, this game really came down to a crazy fourth quarter. What stands out to you? Well, the two big plays that, that Landry Jones made to first to Cam Kinney. Where's he been all season? Picked the right time to show up, right? And James Hanna. I mean, uh, OSU kept coming and uh, OU kept counter punching back. And, and that was the difference. OU made one or two more plays in the fourth quarter than OSU did. Yeah, this was a game that went into the fourth quarter tied at 24. And then you saw all sorts of offense. I mean, heck, even Jimmy Stevens is hitting field goals. The Sooners had to feel real good about where they were in the fourth quarter. Absolutely. And frankly, they were. Uh, I think OSU was fortunate to only be down 21-17 at halftime because uh, OU dominated the entire first half. It was a couple big plays. The interception returned for a touchdown. But you take that away, and OU's defense really stifled OSU's high-octane uh, high offense. And uh, I think it was a really uh, incredible game plan that Brett Venables came up with. Holgerson, the offense coordinator for OSU, really never had an answer for it. Well, you talk about the defense, and, you know, really this OSU score, they had a, a, a kickoff that was returned for a touchdown. They had a defensive touchdown. So, really, the OU defense didn't give up as many points as even are up on the scoreboard. No, you get you give up 27 points. Ten of those came when OU was playing Preven in the fourth quarter. Uh, and then another three came on a field goal where they had the short field there in the first quarter off of Landry Jones' interception. If you hold uh, OSU's offense to what they did, which essentially was 14 points where they actually had to drive down the field, uh, that's an impressive performance. I think it's OU's best defensive performance of the season, specifically in the Big 12. Yeah. And now they get a chance to go play for that Big 12 championship, Big 12 title game next week. Is there starting to look ahead to this Nebraska matchup, or do they just celebrate for a while? Uh, I think they're going to celebrate a little bit tonight. But uh, well, it's interesting. They're going to have to totally shift gears because Nebraska is a completely different team uh, than Oklahoma State. They're a defensive team with major offensive problems. And so uh, I think you, you have to like the way Oklahoma, uh, Oklahoma's defense is playing going into that game. Can, can they move the ball? I don't know if they can turn the ball over the way they did tonight uh, against Nebraska and survive. So uh, while Andrew Jones, I think, played really well, you got to cut down a couple of those interceptions. Throw the ball into the stands. <laughs> That's the key. Yeah, he had two that he tried to throw away, and they were intercepted tonight by the Cowboys. This is going to be a great matchup. It will end the Big 12 football as we know it. The Big Reds going against it. This, is, this should be how it will end in the Big 12. Well, I think it was the way everybody kind of thought uh, the, the conference would go. Uh, Oklahoma State obviously got off to a great start. And OU had its struggles, and Nebraska's had some problems, but they've kind of righted the ship uh, a little bit down the stretch. So, uh, yeah, I think, you know, I think we're going to see the two best teams in the Big 12, and uh, it's going to be very interesting. Uh, Bo Pelini uh, and, and Bob Stoops uh, squaring off against one another. Uh, uh, no, not for the faint of heart. Yeah, keep uh, keep those uh, remotes handy to see what happens on the sidelines next weekend. Hey, stay with the best coverage team anywhere at NewsOK.com and every day in the Oklahoman. Thank you, Jenny and Jake. The win means OU will be headed to the Big 12 title game to take on Nebraska and Dallas next weekend. The loss was a big blow to the Cowboy team and fans, but as Brandon Chapman and Jenny Carlson explained, that's why this yearly match is called Bedlam.
I'm Jenny Carlson here with Brandon Chapman at Boone Pickens Stadium where tonight Oklahoma State has been defeated by Oklahoma 47-41. This is our OSU post game. Our coverage is brought to you by Eskridge Lexus. They've got some of their best deals of the year. Be sure to stop in and see them today. Brandon, even though the first three quarters were pretty entertaining, this game really came down to the fourth quarter. What went wrong? What went right for the Pokes? Just break down that fourth quarter for us. I think really what went wrong for the Pokes at the end is Quite simply, the defense was on the field too much throughout the game. I mean, over 100 plays, 107 plays, I believe. And they simply couldn't get the stops when they needed too late in the game. They needed to get a stop against Cameron Kenny. He goes 86 yards for a touchdown, and then a great play call. Uh, Hannah goes long for a touchdown. And if the Pokes were able to get some stops on those two particular plays, things might have turned out differently. But OU came up with the big plays when they needed them. OSU did not. You mentioned all those plays, and, and Bill Young talked after the game that he had defensive backs cramping all night. Is that a product of, of an offense that that offense struggled in the first half? Maybe that didn't isn't what we're going to talk about with the fourth quarter. But is that really maybe what cost the Pokes late? Yeah, I think that's that's been a key, big key, and I think that's been part of the reason why the the Pokes have struggled on third down. To be frank, all year, I think they felt like their cornerbacks. They won't say it, but I think they felt like their young cornerbacks. They were a little concerned about those guys. How would they hold up in one-on-one -on -one coverage with some of these Big 12 receivers? So they've kept their top two cornerbacks out on the, out on the field for the entire game, and then you're in a situation late in the game where those guys are tired, they're having a tough time staying with receivers who are obviously switching in and out throughout the game. So it, it created some problems their cornerback depth tonight. Let's talk about what happens next because obviously this was a game to play in the Big 12 championship game. Now that opportunity is lost. How much of a disappointment is this for the Cowboys, the way this one played out tonight? Well, it's a huge disappointment. Obviously, you had the opportunity on your home field to, to go to your first Big 12 championship game and potentially go to a BCS, uh, BCS game. So obviously, you've got to be really disappointed because heading into this game, you had to feel pretty good about your chances. But there's still uh, some possibilities as far as some pretty good ball games for the Cowboys to go to. You might see them end up in the Alamo Bowl. You might see them make a return trip to the Cotton Bowl. So there's still the opportunity to go to a pretty good ball game and it, it was a pretty good season for for the Cowboys. 10 and 2 in a season that a lot of people thought the Cowboys might finish last in the Big 12 South. They await their bowl fate that will come after the championship games of next weekend. Stay with the best coverage team anywhere at newsok.com and every day in the Oklahoman. And of course you can catch all the highlights from the game and hear from the players and coaches on newsok.com. Now, Angie ESPN's game day was also in Stillwater for the Bedlam Battle, and our sports team spoke with several anchors and sideline reporters about the biggest game in the state, including ESPN's Erin Andrews, who experienced her first Bedlam football game. I guess it's really big. I mean, this is my first time doing the game, and obviously you go back and you read all the articles, and they're talking about you know, the biggest game in Gundy's career here and the biggest game in history for the university. And the, Yeah, I, it's just always the game is, is such a you know a big-time environment, big atmosphere. We're happy the people that decided to break away from Thanksgiving a little early and come and give us some support today, but I know it's going to be a blast inside here. And plus, all those people that paid that much money for tickets to this thing, are you kidding? I'm sure they're going to get their money's worth and be really loud tonight. And they were obviously super excited that game day was there. Right. Um, so it, this is a pretty big rivalry. How does this compare to other rivalries? Well, I mean, unfortunately, it's really been one-sided for most of it. Um, so, um, but, you know, I think with the excitement around the fact that Oklahoma State comes in and there's so much on the line for them, you know, history-wise and, you know, to be able to clinch the Big 12, you know, South um, is huge. But we've gotten a chance to obviously be a part of a lot of big rivalries. So, um, like, again, I haven't really gotten to see much of it until tonight, so I'm sure I'm sure all really excited about that. What about the fans? How are the fans Fans are great. I mean, you know, we've obviously had bigger crowds at College Game Day, but this is asking a little much. This is a holiday weekend. It's a little early. Everybody's probably a little tired from watching that Boise State game last night, early this morning. So the fans are always wonderful here. And that was ESPN's Aaron Andrews. Let me explain a little bit about that piece. News OK put together what they call a story wall, which includes this mirage collage, if you will, not a mirage, a collage of <laughs> photos, videos, and articles. That is among those that you can find, which is a pretty cool way to look I back know. at a state fair or a bedlam matchup. That we had ESPN right here, and man, she's got beautiful hair. I love it.
I need to find out who her hairdresser is. <laughs> all right, the fans always get riled up for the Bedlam game, and this year they had their own challenge. All season long, the food dude Dave Cathy has been traveling to Norman and Stillwater to see what the fans were fixing up for their game day feasts. All right, guys, judges have, have made their decision, and I got to tell you, that was not easy. That was as hard a judging, and I've done a bunch of them. I mean, it was, we were quibbling, literally quibbling <laughs> by the end of this thing. But when it came right down to it, it was Bart. OSU was the winner this year by a green bean. By a green bean. <laughs> there you go. Great job, Daniel. It was so good. Everything was great, guys. All right. And in the end, viewers and readers chose two tailgaters to go head to head and show off their grill skills. <laughs> OSU fan Bart Town and OU fan Daniel Kim or Kern were fired up for the culinary challenge. Each contestant had to prepare dried aged steaks from Homeland as part of the competition. And this challenge had a different outcome from the game. And you can see the entire cook off and see the videos from the rest of the tailgate season online at newsok.com. Great series. We've done it all for you. We've compiled the, the video, the stories, the photos, and even the recipes <laughs> from those who pack the trailer parks, or at least pack the trailers into the parking lot. There lots. we go. <laughs> That's what I should say. All right, moving along from the grills and the gridiron to the hardwood, there are some truly devoted Thunder fans, but not as devoted as this couple. And when we come back, we'll introduce you to the Thunder fans that traveled thousands of miles to see a couple of the games. Plus, a local brewer fights to get his label design on his cans and bottles, why the federal government objected to his design, next on News OK TV. The Oklahoman is delivering your news in a whole new way. Flip through seven days of sports and video, thumb through photos and more with the all new Oklahoman iPad app, now available in the App Store. See you tomorrow. Hello, this is Mary. I can help you. Hi, my grandma wants to know how to record my show. Press the guide button on the remote. Abuelita, toca el botón guide. Now find your show on the screen and press record. Ahora busca el programa en la... la... pantalla. Working hard for every smile. Another reason why Cox is your friend in the digital age. What could you do with $10,000 this holiday season? You could buy a thousand turkey dinners, 200 holiday sweaters, your own team of reindeer, or a, a trip to the islands just to get away from it all. For a chance to win the $10,000 holiday bonus, get your entry form in the Oklahoman. You could win one of six weekly prizes or the $10,000 grand prize just in time for the holidays. Pick up the Oklahoman or go to newsok.com slash holiday bonus for complete details. And thanks for staying with us here at News OK TV. I'm Dave Morris, alongside Angie Bruss. Football season, which in Oklahoma means OU and OSU, drawing to a close. Oh. And that means more and more people focused on the hardwood and the Oklahoma City Thunder. That's right. The Thunder has been playing in the arena for several weeks, and fans have packed the seats. And amid the crowd last week, there were two fans from down under. I had a chance to meet the couple last week as they flew in from Australia for a quick honeymoon stop. Hey, it's Angie with News OK. I am here at the Oklahoma City Arena with Andrew and Magda, who actually just got married. They're from Australia. They came to Oklahoma City just for the Thunder on their honeymoon. How awesome is that? OK, now right now, it's before the game. We see the Thunder players uh, practicing right now. We actually caught up with them at the airport, so we get them coming off the plane. We just came from Vegas, actually, and we were, um, <laughs> we're staying at the Bellagio. It was a very beautiful place. and. So many beautiful lights and uh, things to see and do there. And went to the Grand Canyon as well. Uh, checked out the Hoover Dam. And before that, we were in San Francisco. San Francisco. Went for a nice bike ride around the um, Golden Gate Bridge. Yeah, the Golden Gate Bridge. It was, yeah. it was really good. But you know, I was just saying to Mags, you know, finally get a chance to maybe see Kevin Durant tonight. I've been um, following NBA for about 14, 15 years. And I started with the Seattle Supersonics when um, Sean Camp and Gary Payton. Obviously, you know, if they move to Oklahoma, they're going to keep keep the team keep the team support going, and it's just so good to see the the team that Oklahoma has, you know, and it's exciting to watch and love to watch the guys play and dunk and and uh, shoot threes. And Lakers, especially last year, that was a crazy series, and 
hoping to do it again. I'm a pretty big sports buff myself, so um, I started getting on board during the playoffs last season. I've seen what the mm. crowds are like, yeah. and they're very dedicated to the team, and there's a lot of commitment behind Loud them. Loud City, I think it's called, so, isn't it? Um, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm keen to get amongst the crowd and show my support as well. Consolidating, you know, our love for each other, and it was, it was the best day. We couldn't have asked for anything better. It was perfect weather. Perfect weather. Yeah. Everything ran smoothly. Everyone had a ball. Um, the boys even suited up in their little jerseys. Yeah, we had our jerseys on. Yeah. So couldn't couldn't miss that one. So I'm surprised he didn't put it in his vows or anything, <laughs> but um, yeah, it comes with the parcel. I think. Yeah, the best man's completely jealous. He was like yeah. saying to me and Andrew before, you know, if one of you can't go, I'm in. I want to go. I want to go. So there's a lot of hype around our. Um, our circle of friends and just some of the locals around our town. It's been going on about it for months. It's been like the focus over the wedding, everything else has been more about getting here to watch the game. So it's just the icing on the cake really. Because of the fact that run our honeymoon and most people go to Fiji or some tropical island, but ours was like, well, let's just, let's slip in an NBA game. You know, the team that I've supported my whole life and this is my dream. And I have to thank my wife for that as well. She's very accommodating of letting me fulfill my dream. First NBA game, First, yeah, American sports game. Uh, beautiful, I love it. This is the only game I'd want to see as well, Oklahoma Thunder, so. It doesn't seem real. I, I watch these guys on the on television, I order the games, you know, watch them on the NBA League Pass and that. And now to come here and, and just see him and Kevin Durant wave at my beautiful wife. And I'm okay with that, that's cool. That's, it's crazy. I think I'll get back to the hotel out. room and I'll be like, what just happened? And it'll be just, it'll Australia feel like a dream, but obviously it's not. It's I'm sitting right here. It just doesn't get any better than this. The NBA's off the charts in terms of, you know, the guys you got playing for. You've got your Kobe Bryant's and your LeBron James and Dwight Howard's and your Kevin Durant's, a superstar of the league. So, you know, these guys are really, really godlike, you know, in Australia. I'm looking forward to Hawaii, but this is probably a once in a lifetime opportunity. I can always go back to Hawaii, but I, I don't think I'll ever come as close as this ever again. They gave, the Thunder just gave the couple a jersey that has their name on it. This is your last name, right? Yeah. A very long last name, yeah. Yes. And Maggie's last name now. Oh my gosh, how exciting is this for you? Uh, I, I'm actually shaking a bit now. <laughs> I can't believe it. I'm sh it's crazy. It's, re it's really, really crazy and I'm loving it. I loving bet. every second of it. And oh, I'm, I bet. Yeah. I bet. How are you feeling? Uh, it's, it's unbelievable. It's absolutely out of this world. Couldn't have, couldn't have asked for anything more. It's just the best. I bet. Yeah. We I honestly did not expect this amount of hospitality and gratitude from the Thunder and we feel like we owe the Thunder a massive debt just for allowing us to, to be here and to watch this. To it's be just... a part of it. What an exciting honeymoon for you guys, but of course they're, they're going to Hawaii after this, so you guys are doing it upright. Thank you yes. so much. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Go Thunder, come on. From down under. Yeah. <laughs> And they say it was a dream come true for them. They, that was the first time to the United States, um, you know, to see that Thunder game, to come to Oklahoma City, to see Loud City. I'm sorry, but my dream is to go to Australia. <laughs> I've been there a couple times, and it is an That's amazing awesome. place. But I, I mean, think about your honeymoon. Vegas, Hawaii, Oklahoma City. I know. <laughs> Gonna catch the Thunder play. Good for them, though. I know. They, they definitely, they made a two-week honeymoon or something. They actually started in San Francisco, so they, they had a uh, whirlwind tour. And pretty cool, the Thunder, to create, hey, here's your customized jersey I for know. you. I know. How much fun is that? Well, speaking of celebrations, a local bookstore in Oklahoma City marked a major milestone earlier in November. The, the independent store, Full Circle, celebrated its 30th anniversary at 50 Pin Place. Hey, it's Angie with News OK. I am here at Full Circle Bookstore in 50 Pin Place, and their 30th anniversary of being in 50 Pin Place is the day after Thanksgiving. I'm here with Dana, who can tell us about this. Now, you guys originally were upstairs, is that right? That's right. When we first moved here to 50 Pin, we were on the third floor. And in fact, our reward cards, if you buy uh, $10 worth of merchandise here, we give you a stamp, and we call it our third floor reward card, which is hard to say. But uh, that's where the, the title originated. We were originally on the third floor, and then when we expanded, we moved down here to the first floor. Very nice. Now, this is a locally owned business, a great bookstore that offers um, just such a unique feel to it. You know, you've got fireplaces, you've got the rolling ladders. Right. Tell, tell us the inspiration behind the store. Well, uh, Jim Talbert is the owner, and he wanted um, 
he'd been to bookstores in England and Europe and he just loved the feeling of it and he wanted to kind of replicate that here in Oklahoma City. We have kids coming in all the time that say, oh, it looks like the bookstore in the movies, you know, and that's kind of what we were going for. We do have the rolling ladders and it just is a really wonderful, homey feeling. We have people that come in all the time just to sit and drink a cup of coffee and, and read a book or two. There we go, there we go, very nice. And uh, also, you have a lot of events here as well. So not only can you come here, read a book, um, and sit in the deli, have a sandwich, and maybe some gelato, but tell us about these events that you have. Well, we have live music every Friday and Saturday here at the bookstore. We also have poetry readings on Sundays. We have uh, classical music on Sundays. Uh, we have re uh, signings for local authors, and we also what we have what we call is New Ink which is uh, local Oklahoma authors that have published one or two books. We ha usually have eight to ten of them on the third Saturday of every month. So we really, we want to nourish the Oklahoma author and the new author. And this entire room is filled with books about and for Oklahomans and Native Americans. So we have one of the largest selections in the state. Very nice, very nice. It's, it's very homey, very uh, warm feeling here at Full Circle Bookstore. And their 30th anniversary is on Black Friday. That's so right. I'm sure there's going to be all kinds of celebrations here on that day. Oh, absolutely, yes. And we're, we're really known for our customer relations. And we have a, a family relationship with a lot of people. We know them by name. We know their taste. Well, happy 30-year uh, anniversary. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Congratulations to Full Circle Bookstore. 30 years, that's amazing. I know, I know. and it's a great uh, bookstore. It's just very warm and inviting. It's very relaxing. It's got the fireplace right I there know. and the sliding ladders. Probably kids are riding those all the time. I, I don't know. <laughs> and it's a great local bookstore. So after the break, one businessman's fight to put out his local brew and get them on the store shelves. That's coming up on News OK TV. Hello, this is Mary. I can help you. Hi, my grandma wants to know how to record my show. Press the guide button on the remote. Abuelita, toca el botón guide. And now find your show on the screen and press record. Ahora busca el programa en la... la... pantalla. Working hard for every smile. Another reason why Cox is your friend in the digital age. You love entertainment, the concerts, movies, fashion, parties, food. Well, lucky you, you have it all in the Oklahoman. Our reporters cover the most entertainment in Oklahoma with Mood, Planet 46, and Weekend Look. From interviews with celebrities to culture in our city, we keep you up to date on everything that matters to you. We'll tell you who, what, when, and where you can enjoy the show. Pick up a copy of The Oklahoman today or find us on newsok.com. I look up to you for all the things you do. I hope to, I hope to be like you someday soon. Cause I look Working up hard to for every smile. Another reason why Cox is your friend in the digital age. Welcome back to News OK TV. I'm Angie Bruss. This is Dave Morris, <laughs> an Oklahoma businessman. I thought it was funny. An Oklahoma businessman has a new patriotic beer about to hit store shelves. Don Sessions founded Old Glory Energy Drinks, and now he wants to use his patriotic theme to sell beer. However, the Federal Alcohol and Tobacco Tax and Trade Bureau took issue with Sessions' label on the can, but after a story from the Oklahoma Susan Simpson ran, the federal government approved Sessions' design. News OK's Tanner Harriet interviewed Sessions about the turn of events. Well, I came out with an energy drink called Old Glory Energy Drink. And I put the Pledge of Allegiance on the can. Uh, and it was OK. Well, I wanted to do a beer. The Army guys told me that they drank one energy drink, but they drank a six pack of beer. So I said, well, I'll do an Old Glory beer. They loved it. So I tried to put the energy, uh, the Pledge of Allegiance on the uh, beer can, and the federal government, the TTBS, uh, Treasury Tobacco uh, Tax Bureau, said, no, you can't do it. We will not let you put the Pledge of Allegiance on the can. Susan came down and did an article on me, put it in the paper, and Fox News in New York and L.A. heard about it. And they called me yesterday afternoon uh, from L.A. and said, can you be in North Hollywood this afternoon? We want to do an interview on you. And I said, I'm in Oklahoma City. They said, well, could you, we could do it there. 
and uh, they interviewed me from New York. And uh, I told them that because probably of the newspaper in Oklahoma City and Fox, uh, I, the federal government called early this morning and said they're going to approve it. Uh, they're going to approve the label. And I've been fighting them for a year and a half. They wasn't going to do it. Sessions says he got the ideas for a beer after the National Guard soldier told him, quote, we drink one energy drink, but we drink a six pack of beer. I bet they'd rather do that. <laughs> now, when we return, we find out what Oklahoma City is thankful for this year. The Oklahoman is delivering your news in a whole new way. Flip through seven days of sports and video, thumb through photos, and more with the all-new Oklahoma iPad app, now available in the App Store. See you tomorrow. Now is a better time than ever to pick up the Oklahoman. Football season's here. That's why you need the best coverage anywhere. Pick up the Oklahoman every day or subscribe for complete coverage. And each Sunday, we serve up a special post-game section just for you. You want football? We cover football and we cover it with the best reporters in the state. John Rohde, Brandon Chapman here. 24-17 victory. He's been proving people wrong his entire career. Stay with the best coverage team anywhere. No one has better coverage of football in Oklahoma, so there's never been a better time to pick up the Oklahoma. What could you do with $10,000 this holiday season? You could buy a thousand turkey dinners, 200 holiday sweaters, your own team of reindeer, or a, a trip to the islands just to get away from it all. For a chance to win the $10,000 holiday bonus, get your entry form in the Oklahoman. You could win one of six weekly prizes or the $10,000 grand prize just in time for the holidays. Pick up the Oklahoman or go to newsok.com slash holiday bonus for complete details. Thanks for staying with us here on News OK TV. I'm Dave Morris alongside Angie Bruss. And Angie, we're just weeks away from Christmas. Yay. We barely made it through Thanksgiving. <laughs> but during this time of family and friends, many people reflect on their blessings. That's right. The Oklahomans Heather Warlick hit the pavement to talk to Oklahomans about what they're most thankful for this holiday season. I'm thankful because I am finally a yet legal resident of the USA and it makes me happy because I can now stay with my wife. I am thankful for my brand new dog Camo and spending Thanksgiving with my family. M&M's? M&M's? Yeah. All right. I'm thankful for my new daughter mm -hmm. who is sleeping. Oh. <laughs> thankful she's healthy. Yes. It's 80 degrees in the end of November. We're happy to be at Big Truck Tacos and not at work. Yes. <laughs> thankful for a job. Thankful to have a job to go back to. Are you doing a big Thanksgiving dinner? Actually, I'm cooking this year Yay. for the first time. How's that make you feel? Nervous. Nervous. Thank goodness for honey baked ham. <laughs> Star Wars. Star Wars. I'm just thankful that I'm a child of the Lord and that he's in my life. I'm very thankful for my family, uh, my loved ones, um, and just the ability to come out here on this beautiful day and enjoy it. I'm thankful for a good friend that I've met at school and getting to spend time with all my family. I'm thankful for friends and family. Thankful for my beautiful kids and all the love that's in my life. You know, I'm thankful for my family and friends as well, but I agree with the kid. I'm thankful for M&M's. What about you? I'm thankful this show's over. <laughs> it's all the time we have on this edition of News OK TV, but of course, you can watch all these videos and plenty more online at NewsOK.com. That's right. We'll be back next week with all new videos. See ya.